I'm Dan with Consequence of Sound. We're sitting here with Circus Survive. We know you guys are Nirvana fans. Uh, we wanted to ask about Emo Night because it seems like the biggest thing in the world. You guys joined the used uh, for a cover of Heart Shaped Box. Could you guys tell us about that a little bit? Uh, it was, you know, that was just something that um, like Bert invited me to go do, and we, you know, hadn't even decided the on the cover until the day of, and when we decided, we realized it was like the actual anniversary of when they uh, found Kurt's body. So it was like a weird day to have celebrated his life in that way. Um, but I, it wasn't like some choice of that the band made together. It was just like, oh, that was something he and Bert, Bert and I just did for fun and to help promote the tour a little bit. What is the best Nirvana album and why is it in utero? <laughs> uh, you can I, disagree I, with me on that. No, no, I, I, I think my personal favorite, at least in, at this point in time, is In Utero, and I think that's probably more a sign of the times than necessarily even a personal choice. It just feels like that record it has influenced a lot of music that, that is sort of kind of very right now. Um, but if I'm going to say, like, songwriting-wise, pro probably never mind, just because every song is, like, a fucking hit. You can't ever get it out of your mind even if you hear it once sure probably uh i probably burn never mind into the ground mm -hmm. you know and then didn't do it quite as much for in utero so in utero still when i turn it on like still some moments that even now feel a little bit fresh and i think also translates like musically the recording and everything seems more raw, more alive, and it just translates to this time like a little bit more. But uh, that's In Utero is probably my favorite one. It's just so fucking good. I feel like everybody expected, like nobody knew what to expect from them. During, and then In Utero came out, it was like this enormous fuck you to like, you know, kind of the status quo pop music and super experimental and really loud and uh, I just love it. I love that. I'll always live like that. It's just like ultimate kind of rebellion, you know. I mean, Kurt obviously means a lot to a lot of people, like as a person and as a musician. And you guys realizing you're doing emo night, like on the the anniversary of finding his body. Do you guys feel like we're ever gonna have a another figure like Kurt Cobain, considering like the music industry now? This is funny because I was actually thinking about it like a couple of months ago, and uh, it doesn't make any sense when I say it out loud, but for some reason, I'm gonna fucking blank on her name now. Who's the young girl that's just like? Billie Eilish. Billie Eilish. I feel like has like a sort of cultural following that is really like, there's some similarity there to me that it's, it's definitely not the same, but it's the first time since Kurt that I was like, oh wow, this is like, this is like taking over an entire generation of like younger people and that's the first yeah. time i've thought that in a while okay i teach middle school and all my it's kids insane. like they worship her so yeah i guess my my uh my answer to that was gonna be maybe a little more dark where i, I essentially like almost hope that we don't you know in a lot of ways because i guess implied in that in that question is sort of um there's sort of a, a tragedy wrapped up in that, right? Like, because of the way we think of Kurt and we think of his existence and impact on music, it sort of is, you, you can't, you can't um, separate it from how he went out and how, and how that affected a whole generation of people. So, you know, I, I honestly think that there's thousands of Kurt Cobains out there, you know, uh, male and female, um, and maybe they're just being spared the fame that essentially destroyed like what he was, you know what I mean? His artist. Uh, and I, I, I think that that's sort of a beautiful time to exist where, you know, someone can put out music that or art that is that profound and just not have to go through the factory uh, destruction of, of their own existence in order for it to impact people. Do you feel like the music industry is self-destructive in that way and leads to things like? Um, I think so. Here, so here's like one of the biggest ways that Kurt um, affected me was one one 
simple quote, simple interview of him at the height of his fame. Um, they asked him if anything's changed since he got famous. And he talked about how before he was famous, he would walk into a thrift store with $5 and it would be the most exciting thing ever because he would be trying to find a treasure. And then how now he knows he can buy the, the whole fucking store and then it, it all looks like garbage. And for whatever reason, that just completely, like I held on to that because I realized that it's not about what happens after you get famous. It's about trying to get it your your art out there as much as possible without getting to the point where everything looks like garbage you know so i don't know if the music industry did that to him but i think that he was he was a he was a highly sensitive person that wasn't built to go through what this what the industry at least at that time puts one through in that position um obviously he had his own issues but i i do think that it was exasperated by media and the pressures of fame.